Hello everyone and welcome at day 19 of a Blunder Challenge where we are crushing the XG dreams, where we are beating the computer, well not really, but um, we are trying to last as much as possible. So here we are, we already started first roll, 630, well normally we are, at, I mean especially at the beginning we want to be fighting for a good point, so 5.4 point we are fighting for, but once I've escaped with one checker there is a huge difference between having one or two checkers back, so uh just about to escape then all about risk reward situations comparisons and you know what i always talk about three six that's the speed game in game so far no real decision oh interesting double five so he was oh, behind a lot in the race we are still far away from the cube even if we roll our best four three well we could make the nine but then open and just making the five point anchor so of course we're just making the five point um, this was, by the way, a very interesting decision, I think, uh, where opponent could decide uh, whether to anchor up or whether to enter on the 2 and hit with a 4. Uh, the problem is, what would really gain him hitting hitting me, right? Because if we get hit now, if, if opponent entered on the 2 point and hit us with a 4, well, what is he really hoping for, right? I mean, if we hit, it's terrible for him. If we just enter, did he really gain a power? I mean... He will probably manage to make the five point, but well, I mean, we are still in far better position. But if opponent just makes the makes the four point, well, suddenly we may leave a shot immediately again. He can remake the board again, and he's got always a solid position, and he's not facing any disaster. So definitely, that was a good play. Uh, four two. I think we want to keep it with one blot, especially because otherwise we would have to leave a double shot. Five two. So this looks like a simple game. Basically, we are just trying to bring our homes safely, flexibly, with as low risk as possible, while opponent is basically just trying to build a board and see what see what's gonna happen for him. Uh, regarding the cube, this is like a holding game. If opponent had just the four point, then obviously I'm always waiting for that certain pip count, a certain defense of a pip count to give the cube. When opponent's got one, I don't know how you call it, tail or one like safety guard on the ace, it's definitely worse for me because it's more dangerous and there's more contact, so I need to be up even more. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, still just still far from the cube. Double two. So my biggest problem was the 13 point. So I guess that's the point I'm going to be clearing. I don't even think there is anything else at all than this. Unless I missed something. Now it was really weird. No, shouldn't be anything else. Um, six two. All right. Oops, maybe. Okay, I didn't click yet. Um, here, definitely... A position where I should think about the cube as I've already cleared my 13 points so oh damn I missed something with double two. Oh good it was not a blunder yeah I was thinking that but well let's first figure out the doubling cube here and then we will check the check the double two again so I cleared my 13 point uh, and now of course, again, if opponent didn't have a blood on the ace, it's all good, I can cube, everything is great, right? Because then it's basically just a race with a small contact, and the difference of a pip count is 14, so that's way enough. With the blood on the ace, what I have to consider is, like, how dangerous it is for me. Because what we are comparing is market losers versus the bad things what can happen, right? And I really don't like, I mean, if I roll 6-5, I just break the 11. So I will leave a blood there. That's not good. Something like 6-4 seems like a shot. 6-3 and these kind of things. Well, 6-3 still. I'm breaking the 11, but it's still a bunch of shots, you know. 6-2, terrible. So huh, now I actually see where I got, uh, why I got so wrong with the, <laughs> with the double 2. Because this is exactly what future I should have actually checked before. I mean, it's just a small mistake, but... Again, it's kind of irritating when, um, let's say I make this play over the board, right? This will happen, and now I'll be thinking about the cube. And suddenly, I realize all these things, you know? I realize that, Jesus, six, basically all the sixes will leave a bunch of shots. Either indirect shots or direct shots. So, when I realize these things, and there will be even more shots, of course, 
Well, suddenly I will question my double two play because suddenly I understand that this is actually no good because I could have actually played 13 to 5, which um, I didn't put that much time into it. Um, it theoretically could have been automatic as well, but now, I mean, 6 3, 6 4 plays nicely, right? The good thing is, why is this so? Why? What's actually important? Why is this good? Well, my opponent is about to break the 13 point basically now. I don't think I would be able to do this play if opponent had like more time with the 13 point to keep. But now, I mean, he's gonna break the 13 point anyway, so it's not like he's gonna give me a hard time, you know? Anyway, based on what I've said, I don't think this is still a cube. I think it should be pretty close. But uh, I don't think so. So double fives, definitely great, great roll. Um, what I'll be, what I'll be aiming at is for this to be a double pass after this move. So uh, looks like I'm definitely going to be making the ace point, no matter what. And now I've got basically <laughs> a lot of choices. So I can make the three point, but then like if he enters on the four, this is far away from the pass. So, not that. Uh, breaking the 11 it just looks terrible. So, what was my favorite option from the start, which I don't know if it's anymore, but it seems solid. So, 10 point was the biggest liability, right? So, I'm getting rid of it. 11 point will be no, 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 no hard to clear. So, seems good. Uh, still looking for something else. I uh, don't think so. So let's try this. It looks weird, so I'm a little bit scared. Jesus, there was something else. Hmm, interesting. I mean, we will wait for the analysis to be... Pres oh no, don't do that. Don't make it that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's close again. Um... So now what I do when I actually see that it's a mistake, because before I said like if you rolls a 4, then well, it's actually far away from the pass, right? But well, maybe it's actually not since I'm a lot of pips up. I will not leave a shot for a while. I mean, all of his dances will be a pass, which is great, right? And seriously, I mean, if he enters, of course he's taking afterwards, but like... It's not that bad. I mean, it's really good for us still. So I think I kind of miss that. Especially like, I mean, he's got 16 dancing numbers, which is just a lot, right? And once I do this, well, I mean, if he enters on the 2, if he enters on the... I mean, if he just enters, if he doesn't enter, I wonder what the cube action will be. I mean, I kind of like this play from the point of view that whatever happens, this is going to be super interesting. And I think my opponent can make a mistake. Well, again, not a computer here, probably, because, well, he knows the answer, right? But if I'm playing a match, this would be, like, interesting theory, right? Because what may happen, whatever opponent rolls, he may pass all the time. I don't think I open it with pass if he rolls a 4 here, but... So, that's, like, a nice... I don't know, I just like to talk about these things sometimes. So, 3-6, so, yeah. So, of course, now it's a take. Maybe I think I can get some passes over the board with this. So let's see. Uh, yeah. 6-5. Well, I think I just have to leave it now, right? It's not like I'm playing 6-1, am I? Uh, I think so. With the blood and everything now, it's just the only way to risk it all in. Definitely not leaving a shot again. And now just thinking about whether to slot the 2 point or playing 5-1. Um, 6 to 1, generally I would prefer that. I would prefer that even more if I had more checkers on the 6 points, since, well, it's just nicer, right? Um, I like it because of some pick and passes, scenarios, even when I just don't hit, so I just roll something with a 6, or I can just make the 2 point later. Um, despite when I do this, I'm basically just hoping for making the 3 point numbers, so... But of course, now we've got so many checkers on the 5 point that maybe that can be good, but I mean, it's going to be close anyway. Yeah, but this is good, yeah. Well, it used to be good. There's a shot. Damn it. Damn it. And we pass this, of course. Bang. Well... 
we made a few mistakes, but we're still in. It was close twice. Fighting for the good points, standard openings, nothing to talk about. Wow, it's really lagging. How do I? I have to change the settings somehow. Three is clear, anchor's clear, that's perfect. If he danced a thing, uh, it probably would not still be a cube. Maybe a tiny bit, but no. What, what would be a market loser? 5-4. So, of course I know the play, but it still keeps analyzing, so I'll wait and I'll just see what happened here. Um, yeah, it's really slow. That was just nothing there. The other option here with double threes was stepping up 24-21, just basically aiming for the anchor. Um, especially because... Oh, I... Well, so if I had if I had put him on the bar with this move, this move would be just 100% correct, 13-10 just to attack. Now in this scenario, well, the thing is, he can put me on the bar kind of easily. That means I will not be able to use my structure. So like he wrote 6-5, 6-3, well, he's just going to put me on the bar. So that's why now it's so close. Otherwise, normally 13-10 would be a great, I mean, the only, the only play. 5-4 plays itself, 5-2 plays itself, oh, actually there were two options, I guess. There was just one option, okay, but I thought it would be closer, actually. Yeah, this is actually, again, this is actually an interesting move, because I actually can, I mean, I was thinking, I mean, I would probably come out, but I was thinking, like, 13 is going to be close, and even though, well, this is fun. 35 pips behind, but this is not about the race, but about like the irritation, like, like what am I going to do? I mean, if I make the four point or the three point, that's what I'm probably going to do, right? That's what that was he can expect. Then, of course, what position do you prefer? Well, you prefer to be on the 18, because then with any six, you can just make the 18 point and it's super powerful. Well, if you do this, I'm making the four point. What are you doing? So... That explains this. Thinking about a cube, but I think it should be close. I mean, I'm 30 pips ahead. Jesus. 30 pips ahead. So that's like important fact. Like if it was 10, I'm not cubing. Now, can it become a big pass? So if I make the four point, if I roll some kind of double, definitely can be a pass. So that's the problem. That's why we need to spend some time. Oh god, 6-2, I mean, I'm still gonna have a lot of work, but some doubles can be crushing probably, but still, I mean, I roll double 2 and I've got too much work. The problem is, I mean, it also doesn't have to turn bad, like, normally 30 pips, I roll 6-2, what's the worst what can happen? Hmm. It's tough to say, huh? It's tough to say, let's just make something, let's flip a coin for the decision. I will wait, but I'm not sure, and I can't, well, I will check it anyway. 4-1, so first what comes to my mind is that, well, of course, I don't think I want to hit, it feels like I just want to make the 4 point, even though that leaves, that leaves 6 is good, that leaves 6 is good. If he hits me with a 1 and a 2, I mean, I prefer not, but if he does that, okay, I mean, what I would hate is the 6. What's the other option? Other option is to play safe. Eh. This one, that's just terrible. I mean, it's not terrible if I get missed. If I get hit, it's terrible. Usually I'm just making four points in these situations. I can't imagine. I mean, I can imagine that this is correct, but I mean, come on. It's gotta be the four point. Let's see how big of a no double it was. Oh, Jesus, huge. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, one even doubles were not that crushing, like, even after double two, I've still got a lot of problems. That was, that was the time where I thought it would be closer, but good. 14 pips, still should be kind of close, but no. Two is here. This is the time where if I come to the 18 again, I'm giving him just everything good. Well, it's not maybe everything, maybe it's just the six. Once to anchor up, six is to hit. This way I can put pressure, but just if he dances. If he rolls a two, 
I'm not happy about my move. If he rolls a 1, I'm not happy about my move. If he rolls a 3, um, then depends, but 3, 5, 3, 6. So this is the analysis of this move. Like, what I'm thinking, this is a complex position, right? So many things can happen. So I'm trying to hope for something. Here, it feels like I'm going to have a solid position. Kind of, even if he rolls a 6, I will have a bunch of options to make the 18, to hit back, to do a bunch of stuff. If I hit here, I feel unhappy in some case, in a lot of cases. I will feel very happy if he dances. So this is kind of tricky for me because, well, tough to, con tough to uh, compare. Maybe I would normally spend some more time, but let's see. All right, probably. Probably was close. I mean, well, unless it's turned red, it's okay. Oh, yeah. So, this is just... I mean, this is difficult to compare, right? Because, yeah, we can see... We can just see the numbers. This wins more game, games and so on and so on. But not that important. I mean, important is the feeling. How you feel about the position and that you know what you can expect. If at the end it will turn out that it's close, okay. You can learn, you can feel a little bit more and you get experience for the next positions. So, I'm um, not unhappy about that. Uh, still, well, 13 pips, jeez. Well, let's just roll. Double fives, that's going to be market loser. One, two, three, four. And unless he, that's an easy double pass. All right. Survived another game, good. Two, one. Survived another game. 3 2. I guess we're just fighting. Oops. Well, I guess we survive another game. Alright, so we're just taking this. I mean, 45 pips, that's kind of scary, but like, not many things happened. I'm just about to anchor basically every single time, unless something bad happens. And I'm sorry that it really lags. I hope. I'll just do auto roll. How do I do auto roll? Okay. I have to check what's happening. All right. So we're back. We made that second anchor as I expected. Well, I mean, there was no doubt that we we're going to make it. So 1 5 to enter. 1 5 to play 13 8. That's clear. Now, question um, Do we leave a blood? Do we care about getting hit? Because the other option would be to play to the three point, right? If we play to the three point, what are we saying? We are saying that we want to make the three point. Well, I don't really want to spend my checkers for the three point, so that's kind of a downgrade. So I have to think about, like, well, how much does it hurt me to get hit? Not that much if I enter immediately and kind of feels like a nice structure, just feels like it's going to be close again. But, I mean, I don't know. It's looks close, looks too close to think about it, but I will do the other way. Looks too close to think about it. Yeah. Oh, damn it. I could have actually slot the five point. Okay. Huh. I just started with 38, but okay. That, um, that, I mean, it's close. I mean, it's still close because it's all the same, but. I actually missed, because that would minimize the shots as well, and that would actually make me a point which I would be looking, for, I mean, hoping for to get. Okay, well, doesn't matter, I mean, it was nothing in it. Um, obviously not hitting now. Keeping the structure all good. Five, one, oops, maybe I could have slotted a five, I just oh, clicked too quickly. What happened? Oh, geez, I leave a shot again. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, I just clicked and here I clicked but by a mistake, but okay. Um, still, basically, the sa same mindset, right? Of course, I'd love to play with this checker. That's still all clear. But as I as I was thinking with the double fives, do I... Do, how do I like getting hit? Well, I hate it. I mean, he's just going to gain a lot of time, right? I keep dancing one, two times. 
and well it's gonna be terrible here i just misclicked because i just played one first i i don't know how it happened but of course you want to be making the board double two one two um now is he leaving a shot is there an option where he leaves a shot if there is i'm making a three point five six five four no five two no well it would be embarrassing but if he's not leaving a shot, well, there is no reason for me to make the 5, or make the 3 when I can make the 5 now. There we go, this is the shot we've been waiting for. Oh, I got out of order. Okay. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four one. Now, just about to save the gammon, but okay. We don't have the question, but we would have had the question to stay, which we probably would stay because any three would leave a double shot. Now we just get a boring single shot, which we love to hit. Um, I will stay because one, two. And now it's just very easy, I guess. All right, game four. So far, so good, but not really a big decision, right? I mean, we just had close decisions, so not really a blunder potential just yet. 6-2, just 35 after double fives, that's easy to, easy to play. Now, I'm a lot of pips up. Um, if I had four checkers on my 13, I think I would play from there. I still may, because I think I've got better chances to escape if I stay on the 24, is that it? Hmm, it's tricky. I don't want to overthink this because I will just probably step up, but I mean, the thing is, he's going to build, I'm going to build, looks solid, so I don't actually know why I would not do this. Maybe I'm just overthinking that, and I'm indeed overthinking that. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Um, let's see. I will just say that this will be a blunder anyway, but we can just call it a blunder because, yeah, I just overthought it. But So, this is really difficult to, no, well, not difficult, but this is really important to go through, for example, for me. When I play, when I practice, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to be 24-21, right? So then, what I changed in my mind, why actually I decided not to play that? What were the arguments? Why did I put so much value into arguments against it? So I was afraid. I was afraid. Now I see what I did. So I was afraid that, of course, he will just attack me and that I will not escape, right? The problem, the biggest problem is what I did. Now I can see it. He, well, he's making a point no matter what, let's say, somewhere, right? Ideally, if he makes a four point now, well... I don't want to be building. I mean, if I be build, if I going to be building, I'm going to get stuck. So it's like, of course. I mean, if there's a chance, I'm going to build something. Sure, I do. I'll do it. The problem is that's not the thing I want. I mean, the biggest gain, the biggest thing, what's going on? Also, the biggest risk. What matters here is the back checker now on the 24. And well, this is probably obvious when I'm talking about it now. Well, it was obvious to me before as well, but. All right, make a mistake anyway. Well, okay, happens sometimes. I'll call this a blunder because I think we've got four games and this was a, this was a go to, good to talk through. And also because it's lagging a little bit, so I don't know how it will turn out. But, well, I hope you, well, hope you didn't lose the blunder challenge either. Basically, we didn't lose, so I don't want to lose. I don't want to continue now, so sounds good. And I'll see you, I don't know when, Tuesday or something. See you. Would you like to improve your game or maybe even become a grandmaster? Pagamon Coaching offers four options how to help you with that. First, we've got video courses. Any level you are at, video courses will give you knowledge, tools and shortcut of a world-class player. Second, individual lessons one-on-one. -on -one. In case you've been stuck at the same average PR and you don't know what to do, individual lessons are here for you. Third and fourth, we will transcribe and analyze your matches. So we will point out all the mistakes. Visit bagammoncoaching.com for more information.